I know that I haven't been here very long, but I want you to know there's some things that I want to get done and see done as quickly as possible. One is I want to get all the walls and all that, all, all that put back up because we have if we have guests, we have people to come and visit, we got one chance to make a good impression. Yeah. One chance. And so we need to make a good impression on people. Our, and we can do that by being loving and, and friendly and cheerful and all that's very important. But also we need to be able to have a, an atmosphere that people feel warm and welcome and they're not wondering, why in the world is all this like this? <laughs> well, this time we got off that, another thing I'm going to get done is I'm going to make sure there's no more leaks that we're going to have to look up. Maybe you might look up. You might want to look up and praise the Lord and think, what is that? <laughs> we don't want the roof to fall in our heads, so we're going to get that done. Now, another thing I'm going to do is we're going to start raising some money, and we're going to get a good sound system. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's important that people be able to hear us clearly and that we be able to, to uh, exercise uh, things in that way. And I believe that God will make a way for us to have not just uh, not just good, but the best. You know, in our home, we want to have the best. Right. We want to have the, the best that we can. Right. Well, I'm telling you, in the house of God, we want to have the best that we can. Amen. We want to give the best that we can. We want to be the best that we can. Amen. We want to give God praise, honor, and glory in all things. It's a good thing for people to be able to hear. Amen. It's a good thing for it to be nice and clear, and we've got to get past these issues. These are not 
major issues, but they are issues, and we're going to get past them. Now I'm back in Habakkuk again. Habakkuk was a prophet of the Lord. Again, he was uh, he's considered among what they call the minor prophets, but that's not because he was a, a minor prophet. That's because it's a small book. It's not, it's not as long as some of the others like Isaiah and, and uh, Jeremiah. Now I'll tell you that some people wonder if these books were, were just basically written as allegories. This, this is what you might hear in a lot of the uh, cemeteries or the seminaries that people go to. <laughs> right. is that, uh, the books of the Bible were written like there wasn't, you know, there wasn't really a Moses and there wasn't really an Exodus and uh, and David was a mythical character, and uh, you know they'll try to liken him to some uh, one of the Greek gods or or something like that. Just a bunch of garbage, yeah. just a bunch of junk, and it's not even worth our time listening to. Amen. This week it was announced, and and see this is not anything I need to to know or or you need to know to fortify our faith, but it helps all those out there whose faith is not fortified. Now you know on the uh, on the top of Mount Zion, there sits a gold dome, and it might be pretty to look at, but it is a, it, it's a heathen place, it's an ungodly place, mm -hmm. and it is set against everything that Jesus came to do, right. and that He is doing. And so there will come a day when all of that will be gone, and the temple will be built again there. As it is right now, the way things stand in Israel, they always say, whoever was there first can have the land. And so we've got some people that, that are living there as well as uh, the people of Israel, the Jews, and they say, well, we were here first, and there's absolutely no evidence that there was an Israel. They're the ones who want to say it's all made up. Yeah. Absolutely no proof of it at all. And so this is our place, and, and these people are occupying our land. That's garbage, too. Yeah. And one of the things that they did a few years ago, which I thought, well, that's kind of funny, because they don't want you touching anything on top of that mountain, because they know if anything gets touched up there, it's going to prove there was a temple on top of that mountain. Not just a gold dome that's dedicated to Allah and, and, and Muhammad, but there was a temple there, and there was a, a holy place there, and there was the holiest of holies there, and people went and gave God praise and worship there. So they don't want you to do that. Once when I was there, we were standing out on the lawn. I think they've got pretty much covered all that up for this reason. We walked out on the lawn, and our guide said, now not everybody at once, but I want you to kind of look down a little bit and tell me what you see. And so I looked down, and I could see Clearly, the work of buildings. It's just in the ground. But it's still there. It can be excavated, and it can be proved, but they say there's no excavation allowed there. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if anybody even starts talking about archaeology under there, well, then they'll, become, they'll have a riot, start throwing rocks at everybody, get all upset about it, because they don't want the truth. They don't want the truth to come out. Now, We've got to know that God has a plan that's going to bring that thing back together in the right time and in the right place. Yeah. And in the meantime, we've got to hear the voice of God. <clears throat> now, talking about the idea of archaeology, that's one of my favorite things. And I love to watch uh, some shows that have to do with excavating certain sites, some of them going back to, to prehistory going back in four, and they call the time of Abraham prehistory, before things were recorded and written down so much. But you can find things that still exist in this earth. And there are people that are archaeologists, they can find this, these places where buildings were, and they can excavate it, they can say, this happened and this happened, and it kind of makes it live again. It helps us understand the way things work. Now, I think a whole lot of people probably need to get excavated. Mm. Or just you know, some of us are sort of like archaeology. Yeah, the, the the basics are still there, but it's all covered up. Mm -hmm. We've let the, the dust of time settle over us. We've let dirt pile up on us. 
We let the junk and the trash of this world kind of fill up every edge and corner of our lives till we're living in fear. We're living in doubt and we're even living in unbelief. So what we need to do is be excavated. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you the plow. The Holy Ghost is the plow. Mm -hmm. And he's going to break up the fallow ground. He's going to break up the ground in our lives so that who we are as believers can be revealed again. So the glory of God can be made manifest in this earth. This is the plan that God has for these last days. To bring revival upon the earth. And you and I, we ought to be like Habakkuk and his, his feeling and his passion and his, his brokenness before God. You can see this in, in chapter 1 as he cried out to the Lord. How long, O oh Lord, will you remain silent? You see, this is his name. He's a, he's a struggler with God. He's struggling to know why things are the way they are. And he's crying out to God. He said, I see this happening all around us, Lord. I see that there's wickedness going on. And it seems like the, the wicked have more than, than the righteous. It seems like the wicked get their way while the righteous get trampled upon. Well, it seems that way, but it's not that way. Amen. Anything that the enemy can do to make us feel slighted, he will do that. Yeah. That's one reason why people get offended so easily in churches. I don't know why, other than the fact that God wants them there, but they, they, they can get upset real easily because there's somebody else sowing some seed there. Somebody else causing a problem there. I had a fellow one time that, that uh, was a member of my church, and he was very uh, conscientious, very much involved in church, always there, and then all of a sudden he stopped. And I'll just go ahead and tell you what he said to me. I, I went over to see him and I said, now I've been missing you in church, uh, you know, what's going on? And he said, well, I was in, uh, the last time I was in church on Sunday morning, uh, you, there, were, there were some signs there that told me that I wasn't supposed to come back to church anymore. I said, well, what, what were they? I can't remember what the second was. The first one was said, he said, I made the sign of the cross. <laughs> I said, well, I've never been, I've only been in the Catholic church once and that wasn't even for a service. <laughs> so then, you know, no, no, nothing against Catholicism. I said, I, I did a wedding with a priest one time and he couldn't stand it because I was praying and just talking to God. <laughs> he, wanted, he kept trying to give me written prayers. I kept saying, I don't need written prayer. No. I said, I don't have to write down what I'm going to say to my wife when I talk to her. She wouldn't like it if I did. Maybe she might like a poem or some kind of, you know, some love note. But let me tell you, I don't rehearse what I'm going to say to her before I say it. I just talk. I said, now in my relationship with God, see, I, I like to shoot from the hip. You know what that expression means, don't you? You just start talking. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, these cowboys back in the old days, they'd pull their guns and just start firing. They wouldn't aim. That's the reason. You think a lot of people got shot in those gun, gun back? No, almost nobody ever did. <laughs> that's, that's cowboys on TV. Yeah. In real life, that don't happen. No. Even back in those days, if anybody started firing, everybody started ducking. <laughs> and a gun might go off, but the bullets were going to go, Lord knows where. They're going to go everywhere but where maybe somebody wants them to be. There's only one man that really started that whole thing, and that was Wild Bill Hickok. He's the only man, and he said, it was pure luck that I hit the guy. He said, I pulled and fired, and the guy went down, and he was the sheriff of that town at the time, and he said, I was surprised as anybody that he went down. He said, but I acted like I did it on purpose. <laughs> so don't let the... I don't want the movies fool you into thinking that's how it is in real life. But when it comes to praying, we need to start talking from our hearts to God. Yes. Talking from our hearts to God. And if we can't find anything to talk to God about, I want you to begin to survey the land. I want you to begin to ask God to give you his heart for this nation in these days. Yes. Because I want to tell you that God has a, a cry of passion rising up in this earth. Yes. The earth itself cries out to God. Mm -hmm. And the people of God ought to be on the forefront yes. of that cry. Yes. We're letting everybody else get louder than we are. Right. Yeah. Everybody's shouting about this and shouting about that. There's people that are declaring the, the righteous to be unrighteous and the unrighteous to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Who gave them the right to do that? Who told them they were the Lord God most high? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I know who told them, but it wasn't us. Right. 
So now we need to know who God is and what he wants to do. This was the cry of Habakkuk's heart as we began to share last week, talk about his, his burden for the people. And, and he himself struggled with God, wanting to, to hear the voice of God. Now that can happen to us personally. It can happen to us as a local church. And it can happen in a greater way, even in a culture or, or a nation in the Western world. What's going on? People are all the time saying, well, we want our churches to make progress. We want people to be saved. We want people to get healed and filled with the Holy Ghost. But we just, we don't have time to pray. Right. I didn't hear anybody say amen. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to seek God. We don't have time to get into the Word of God. And then we're surprised when things don't happen. Well, that's what we hired a pastor for. No, 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 no. You, I'll tell you what a pastor is supposed to do. He is supposed to equip the saints for the works of the ministry. Now that's what Jesus said. I, I don't know what you say. I know I've said some things that were wrong over the years about that. But as I've grown and studied more, this is one of the things we'll talk about in our meeting here is, is finding our gift and using it for God. There's nothing greater than that. Amen. I couldn't be I couldn't be happy if I wasn't preaching. I, well, I, I kind of took a sabbatical before I came here, took some time off, and it really started getting to me because I wasn't preaching all the time. It's hard for me to go to church and listen to somebody else preach because mm -hmm. I wanted to preach over the top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing against them, but it's just something that, that always has stirred within me, and particularly in that time that I took off. Deb's told me that I, she tells me that I talk in my sleep a whole lot, but I don't know about it. I'm not awake. <laughs> so I assume she's not telling a story. Y'all know what telling a story is, don't you? <laughs> she's telling the truth, and I believe probably I do a, a lot of talking. My, I do a lot of talking when I'm awake. So uh, probably do a lot when I'm sleeping. But she said, one night, you woke me up and you were preaching. I said, well, what was I preaching? And she told me, and I said, that's pretty good. <laughs> so I wrote it down, and I've preached it since then. Praise the Lord. Another time, she said, I woke, woke her up, and I was hollering and giving an invitation for people to come and get saved. And I asked her if anybody came down. <laughs> Nobody came down. Nobody came down. Well, I didn't want to see that change as well. But... I can't keep that stored up within me. We need to let the passion for God and the fire for God begin to burn within us. Let the Holy Spirit fan those embers. Embers are dying flames. You know when a house burns down, there can still be hot places for weeks and weeks after that. It's just still some embers there. If there was anything left to ignite, it would ignite it. But that low flame will stay there for the longest time. Anytime I've ever cooked on the grill, Debs gets she gets frustrated because all them hot coals are still out there and she's not cooking anything on them. She wants to keep on going. Well, I'm going to tell you, a lot of us will settle for, for burned over coals and embers. But we can't let that happen. We've got to We've got to have some fresh fire. Amen. We're going to have some God pour out upon us, and he will, and he does, and he is, so that the fire of God begins to rise up within us, and the passion of God begins to get stirred. I'm going to tell you that people, well, there are people that follow ambulances around, there are people that follow fire trucks around. Mm -hmm. Some people even keep those kind of radios in their house because they wouldn't know what's going on. Maybe if the cops get called on you, they wouldn't know about it. <laughs> So they can tell somebody about it. I've seen people following fire trucks around and I've never